the one DG that I wish existed when I was being an, when I was an EU trainee myself, because I would have certainly loved it my way up to uh, get my traineeship there. I would like to introduce Fabio Mauri, the Director General at Digimim. I'm very glad I could talk about something very dear to my heart, which is satire, and specifically the relation between satire, democracy, and freedom of speech. Now, I guess you're all familiar with the last two terms, but let's make sure that we know what we are talking about when we speak of satire. Satire is a form of art which targets society and specifically uh, its problems, questions, doubts. And uh, despite popular belief, satire is not, um, does not want to make you laugh, it wants to make you think. And it tries to present uh, problems from um, sometimes an exaggerated perspective uh, so that you can analyze it in a broader way. And um, as such, it aims to have some sort of, uh, you know, constructive social criticism. So, you, you know, you can keep your idea, but consider this point of view as well. And uh, social criticism is uh, what I try to do with DigiMeme. I started the page because I don't like the way the institutions are communicating. I think they could do better, and I wanted to change that. And I found out that satire is a great way to do this. So I started a fictional directory general, which uh, uses the same, uh, you know, buzzword as the commission, the same unappealing text, pointing out, you know, this is probably wrong, we could do it better. And uh, because that's how satire works, you know, sometimes it just pretends to like something to criticize it and say, well, maybe we can find better ways. But from a historical point of view, satire existed in every uh, culture. Already in ancient Egypt, uh, we have this manuscript called the Satire of Trades, where scribes, who were the, back then the elite, intellectual elite, some kind of, uh, you know, you bureaucrats, they were making fun of other professions. And then uh, we went off from uh, ancient Greek, uh, Chinese Empire, Romans, they all had satire. And uh, during Middle Age, which is when the... Um, the concept of modern state was born, we find the medieval jester. And the jester features prominently in the log of Digimim because I think jesters are really cool people. Because imagine with their songs and poems and a bit of folly, they managed to entertain powerful people, kings, make a king laugh. It's not an easy job. And sometimes jesters also managed to break the news to the king that his advisors didn't want him to know. Like say, you know, it's not like your advisors are telling you our communication sucks, you know, this kind of gesture of medieval time. And um, so, very important. And because of this uh, special connection that the gesture developed with those in power, sometimes it happened the gesture had a significant political role in the Middle Age. And uh, nowadays it's not very different. We have many comedians that reach uh, world politics. I would say the most famous one is Volodymyr Zelensky, my blessing to him. In Italy we just had Beppe Grillo, but you, know, you have to, to work with what you have. Um, in any case, there is a tendency uh, of people to trust comedians more than politicians. And I wonder why is that so? And I think the answer is that while a politician focuses on popularity, so to become popular, they do anything. Uh, a comedian, when you write your speech, when you write your, your comedy, your satire, you try to think about the truth, like what is the real message behind this? And because of that, people tend to believe a, a, a comedian more than they believe a politician. But, of course, uh, it's not uh, as easy, uh, <laughs> despite of being appreciated at a popular level, it's very hard to do satire, because fanatics and establishment obviously hate you. And why is that so? Um, uh, because if we use the words of Jorge de Burgos in The Name of the Rose, if you laugh about something, you're not afraid of it. If you're not afraid of it, you might start questioning it. But questioning those in power is one of the key features of any working democracy. So it is in the interest of democracy to defend freedom of speech and specifically satire. And I'm saying that because I must say in the last years I noticed an increasing intolerance towards satire, especially coming from very educated people and uh, advocates of uh, political correctness at any cost. And this is the right audience to point out, I think this approach to communication that certain people push of extremely dry, empty messages is very dangerous for us because the risk is we alienate the majority of the population and they will you know, move to, towards more uh, populistic narratives. So it's always good to consider things from, from different aspects and it doesn't harm if you can laugh about something. 
And I wanted to show you very fast a couple of examples of this intolerance. This is distracted boyfriend meme. You all know it, yes. There is also a female version, distracted girlfriend. And according to many of my uh, readers, I should remove this meme because it represents everyday sexism. And now you might think, okay, it's just a group of very sensitive people that have this issue, but actually in Sweden, this was deemed as degrading and discriminatory meme, and ads based on this meme are uh, discouraged and prohibited in Stockholm region, at least. So, something to think about. Um, another uh, problem when you make a meme that you want to point out a fact and reason about it, right? Uh, so, with this meme, I wanted to say, well, it's interesting to note that our Turkish friends that are supposedly enjoying the benefits of, the, of a democratic, uh, living in a democratic country, they still prefer a majority to vote for an autocrat. And it can be an interesting discussion because maybe it means that the advantages of living in a democracy are not clear. So there could be many interesting conversations coming from this. But of course, uh, every third comment on this meme was you are a racist, you are demonizing migrants and something like this. So it's very hard to debate. We cannot forget how to discuss things. It's very important. To conclude, um, I think an inclusive society is also a society in which we all agree that whatever I held as a truth and absolutely important to me can still be ridiculous for other people. I, I might not like it, but I have to accept it. That's also part of living in a democracy, because the fact that you're offended doesn't necessarily mean that you're right. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. All right, thank you very much, Fabio. I think there's a lot that we can uh, take, I think, from, from this, but most importantly, the, the importance of satire in holding our governments into, into account and the need to uh, defend uh, that. So thanks a lot for, uh, for being with us uh, today.